Amen. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Everybody, bless the Lord one more time. You know, the Lord is an extremely good God. Yes, we are here. One more time in Bible study. And, you know, we must teach God all the things, you know, that is the only thing to You know, and we have four of us to be here one more time. And for that, you know, I am really grateful. So I want to say welcome wherever you are tuning in from. We welcome you. We thank you for joining me. And we pray that the Lord will keep your heart tonight. You know, that is, you know, there's something that you want him to minister to that, you know, God knows. And that I'm just a vessel. And we can use this vessel tonight to minister to you as an individual. Let us just bow our heads as we pray before we proceed. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name one more time. We lift you up, we exalt you, we magnify you, Jesus. We glorify your name. We thank you for this privilege to be in a Bible study yet another time. We ask, mighty God, that you will accomplish in our midst tonight what you set us to accomplish. We pray, God, that we speak to every heart, speak to every mind, and we ask that you will do like only you can do. God, I'm just a person tonight, and you know the heart of your people. Anything you have to say tonight, we pray that you will say to them. We pray, God, that you will grant repentance. We pray, God, that you will bring us to a point where we will be completely and totally surrendered to you. We thank you for your love one more time as we give your thanks in Jesus' name. And in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord one more time. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, you know, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. And, you know, I rather to be saved than, you know, to be out here in the world. It's just a good thing to serve the Lord. You know, this is the time to serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Amen. You know, he's just so good. He's just so lovely and so marvelous. So we have been talking about the rejected and the accepted thing. And we have spent some time and we have looked at the life of this child. And the last time we were here, we were talking about, you know, the life of this child and, and how he was rejected. We were on the point and how he was rejected. And we are going to do a little recap. But, you know, our key verse um, is First Samuel chapter 16. From verse 18 to 28, but our key verse is verse 26, and we will read verse 26 tonight. And the Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. You know, it, 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 you know in return, once it's for him to serve in the Lord, you cannot get away from the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is what guides us, it is what instructs us, you know, as individuals, how we should live for the Lord. I feel tonight that, you know, I should really just point out the, the aim of, of what we are trying to do here, you know, with the lesson over this week, right? So we did say that the aim of the study. We did say that the aim of the study is to, you know, try to look at the lives of these two kings to see how, you know, they can help us in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, while we have not yet even looked at the life of King David, we have spent some time and look at the life of King Saul, and from the life of King Saul, we recognize that there are some things that, you know, we should not do if we want to maintain a relation to this God. And, you know, whether it is a negative thing we can learn from it as what not to do, and if it's a positive thing we can learn from it as what we should do, you know, God has a set of requirements, and 
we get these requirements and instruction from the world. And I think to us that, you know, I can go through the world. We want to, you know, just look, from the, look at the lives of these two things and, you know, draw from them, you know, what we can do, you know, to serve the Lord in a better way. Then the next point is to see a determination to look at that. If we, as we look at the life of King Saul, we recognize that he talked about doing everything good. Amen. He was such a pleasant young man. He was such a, a good young man. He, he, he exercised mercy when it comes to the sons of Delilah. Amen. And he heard his speech when he could have done something about it, when they disrespected him. But after a time, the Bible said, after two years, he recognized that Paul had to and if Paul was determined to live for God, if his mind was in a place where he was determined to serve God, then nothing would have prevented him from living for God. I want us to know tonight as people of God, as children of the living God, that as we travel along this Christian journey, we must have a determination to live for the Lord. The adversary will come. And, you know, he will put many things in our way. And if we are not determined, if we do not have that need of mind to serve the Lord, then we are going to end up like Paul. We are going to end up turning our backs on the Lord. And the Lord says, Paul has turned back from following after me. And um, he has not kept my commandment. And, you know, at the end of the day, we want the Lord to say that we as people of God have kept this. His commandment. And the point two is we are not so much on our feet to see, amen, to motivate us to get to that path that is pleasing to the Lord. I want to encourage us because, you know, not all the time, sometimes we struggle to see, sometimes we struggle, amen, in our relationship with God. And it's not until we get an overwhelming presence or dedication from God, then, you know, we get straightened up. But I want to encourage us that we are not feeling that overwhelming presence. We are feeling as if God is here. I want to encourage us to, to serve the Lord with all our heart. Amen. Don't, don't have one foot in and one foot out, but serve the Lord with all our heart. You know, there was a certain revelation that, you know, with the Lord said, Those that are not cold now, if I were you were cold, then I would know what to do. But it's not going to pull you out. Right? So it's important for us as people of God. If we are not so much, you know, on a good footing, and it happens to be less of us, you know, it's time for us to go to the place where, you know, we make sure that our footing is firm to the Lord. Amen. So the last time we were here, we really looked at. We look at Paul calling for the heart of the Lord. And when he called for the heart of the Lord, he was about to inquire of the Lord. We did say that the, 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 the same team gathered themselves together to fight against Israel. And the Lord, you know, somehow took the heart of Jonathan and Jonathan spoke with his armor bearer and said, that we are going over there because the Lord don't necessarily deliver by me. The Lord can also deliver by me. And Jonathan and his armor bearer went into the garrison of the city team. And, you know, God brought them the victory. So now here was King Saul on the other side, you know, with the army behind him. And King Saul called for the heart of the Lord. And the priest, and we say that he called for the heart to inquire of the Lord. We look at Judges chapter 20 and verse 26 through to 28. We, we, we say that the children of Israel, you know, they went against their brother Benjamin, and Benjamin defeated them the first time. They inquired of the Lord the second time. And the Lord told them to go up against Benjamin, and Benjamin defeated them again. So the 
I will see what is victorious and will deliver the people from the hand of the Philistines. That is what we are dealing with in our lives. So I want to say to us as people of God, victory will only be guaranteed when we rely on the Lord. Whatever we do, whatever we do, we must rely on God. Whatever we do, we must make sure that we stand the mind of the Lord. You know, stand what God is saying in this thing. And, you know, allow the Lord to lead us, allow Him to guide our every step. The Bible says, the steps of a, a good man, a righteous man, is ordered by the Lord. And as people of God, we want to make sure that our steps are ordered by Him. Allow Him to direct our path. And he is a God. He is God. And he is all knowing. He knows the beginning. He knows the end. And since he knows the beginning from the end, he is the best one to guide us, you know, along the path. So let us know, you know, try our very best to seek the Lord, to empower the Lord. Now, what is it that we have need to do? I guarantee us that if we accept this kind of attitude, we will empower the Lord. And his direction, we are supposed that God will, in turn, direct our path and direct us, you know, in the path that he wanted to go. I know that we are still in the next slide. I know that we are still in the but as I look at the, the entire thing, I will read that, you know, the Lord does something in my spirit. You know, it seems far, I did not say this the last time. I'm telling you, no. The King Saul was interested in receiving direction from the Lord. He would have received that direction. He would have received instruction from the Lord, you know, on what he could do. In essence, the king was sitting on a field. So the fact that he told the king to withdraw his hand. Demonstrate that he was really into hearing what the Lord had to say. He did it because it was the thing to do. So you know that the thing to do on a daily basis is to go to work. Sometimes we feel like we don't want to go to work, but because it is the thing to do, we get up, we get ourselves to have a power, and then we go to work. So in essence, when things fall, Told it so easy to send back. Amen. The, 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 the priest, it shows that he was really interested to receive a word from God. But he was, he wanted to do his own thing. So in essence, the king was putting on a show. You know, he wanted to show everybody that was here. I am so godly. At this point, the king was in a boxing field. But he wanted to show people that this year, I still have a connection with God. I am still having a relationship with God. I still put God first. And so what he does now is to call for the priest to put on a tour. He was in a basketball field. He had no interest in doing the will of God. God. Everybody cry for the truth so that others around him might think that he is God. He was in a back to the field, but he cried for the truth just to have others see. As I grew as God, he wanted the people to grow in as God. If as people of God, we pretend to have a relationship with the Lord and we are far from Him, we are not fooling anyone. So, if as people of God, we leave our home, we come to church every Sunday, just so that we can be fed. But I do to church. So, somebody in their mind can mark a register. 
the big percentage of you that pretty much so, you know, in the US I really need to thank you for that. If we leave our homes and homes to serve, that's in the case. Amen. We are not fooling anyone. If we come to church and there is no relationship with God, we have no intimacy with God, we have no fellowship with God, we are not fooling anyone. Coming to church is one thing, but having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is another thing. I would encourage, I would encourage us, you know, that we need to that we have I mean, we really can sit with God. If we don't come to church, we let it be said, boy, I'm missing to the book. I, I know that he has a really can sit with God. Right? So if we pretend to have a really can sit with the Lord and we are not coming, we are all fooling ourselves. And if we continue to drift from the Lord, we are going to find ourselves going against the command of the Lord. Just like Inside. If we need help, ask for help. There is no need to pretend. You are poor in church, you are concerned about your soul. So if you're having a hard time praying, if you're having a hard time doing something, you talk to somebody, ask for help from somebody far away. Put me before God because, you know, this and this is the situation. But let us not pretend. Amen, because it won't take us anywhere. So, in fact, we could have come here if you had something like a form of godliness. Something like a form of godliness. The apostle said from the first that we could see away. Let us find it to turn to find Timothy 3, verse 1, 2 to verse 5. Right? So, he saw that at the point where he was not sitting, but he is suspended. Amen. As if he was gone before he called for the Ark of the Covenant and the Bible covered it so that we can understand clearly what was happening. The man was not sitting, but he was pretending. And I am saying to us, as people of God, let us not pretend. If we need help, so we have to say, look here, if you have a family, by the way, see how you find them. So can see what it is? One, two, three, four. It says, this know also that in the last year, tell us time shall come. For men, for the lovers of their own self, for this one, both sides, proud, Blasphemous, disobedient appearance, unthankful, unholy. We call it natural affection, truth breaker, child of children, incontinent, fear, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heavy, unminded, lovers of children more than lovers of God. Having a form of government, but the nine the power be are from such the apostles turn away, right? So I want us to understand that the the, the, the king was never of of the place. He was never the king around me, but he was not a lover of God. So the king was in a bastard state. He was at the point where he was denying the power of God. Next slide. Uh, then we. So as the king said, as we said from God, he became egotistic and self centered. So this was the next point that we knew about God. And this is 1 Samuel 14. Verse 24. It's a curse be the man who eats food until it is even, and I am as then on my enemy. So Israel was in battle, and the king said, Curse be the man that eats food until even, until I am as then of my enemy. At this point, the will of God, God's honor, amen, was 
that no one concerned to solve, all that was of concern to solve was about himself. So he made an oath, he made an adoration, you know, and so, you know, so he was, so all his egotism, he so his self-centeredness until I am avenged. Look at the picture. He said, until I had am avenged of my enemy. So while Paul was afraid, we said it, that if he, if he waited, waited for, the, for, the, for his army to respect themselves, the same thing would have escaped. But the other way that he made defeated his own intention. So the next point that he made, he said that he caused Israel to sin. The other way that he made by saying, no one could eat until he is in, until he is avenged of his enemy. It caused Israel to sin. And this is one of the, one of the, the burn side of the man, because he drifted so far from God. He, 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 he started doing things. And this adoration that he made caused Israel to sin. First Samuel 14. Verse 31, 2 to verse 32. And there is no between that day from Lisbon to Ireland. And the people were very soon. And the people threw up on the fire and took feet and oxen and cows and threw them on the ground. And the people did eat with the blood. We made the point last week. I right, look, look at the other day. Then the poor child said, You will the people sin against the Lord in that day, it with the blood. And he said, We are trying to get more of the poor upon me. So this man is saying, Look all the things. And he did not even think about the fact that he was the one that caused them to sin. Verse 34, and Father said, Be spread yourselves among the people and say unto them, Bring me hither every man is up, and every man is sick, and slay them here, and eat, and sin not against the Lord in eating with the blood. And all the people who are every man is up with him that night, and slew them there. So he caused Israel to sin, he caused the, 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 the people to eat the meat with the blood. The Lord commanded his people not to eat the life of any flesh. When you look at Psalm back at Genesis chapter 9, verse 3 and verse 3 and 4, every moving thing the Lord said that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb. I have given you all things. But, flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall he not eat. So the Lord makes it clear from in the book of Genesis, you know, to, to Abraham and his family, to Noah and his family. You should not eat anything with the blood. Then in Leviticus chapter 17, Let us find that one. So, in Leviticus chapter 17, 10 to 12, again the Bible talks about, you know, that, 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 that the people of God could not eat. So, in said, look here, and whatever man there be of the host of Israel, or of the strangers that shall burn among you, that eateth any manner of blood, I will even put my face against that soul that eateth blood, and will cut him out from among his people. So this was God saying, but I want you to understand the thing that the king caused Israel to do. God was saying that if any man eat his blood, I will cut him out from among his people. Let's read. Father, 
the rule of the place is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar, so you make an atonement for your sins. For it is the blood that you make an atonement for your sins. Therefore, I say unto thee, unto the children of Israel, no soul you can ask you to eat blood, neither shall any soul that can join us among you eat blood. This is why we made a point last time that we need to pray for our leader, right? Because this was the king, he was the leader of the people, and, and, and he caused them to sin, and because they sin, amen, it was a great thing in Israel. The people threw down on the soil, threw the animals with the blood. The king caused, the one that was in leadership caused the people to sin. As the church, as people of God, we need to pray for our leaders of our country. Amen. But we must also pray for the whole church leaders, the leaders that we want for our soul. Amen. We have to pray that our leaders follow the leading of the spirit, follow the Lord Christ, said, follow me as I follow Christ. So we want to make sure that our leader, our bishop, our elders, our minister, are following Christ so that they will not lead our soul to the pit of hell. So because of Christ's soul decision, he was able to choose his son. Right? And when you mention that his son, you know, this, 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 this is fear in some honor, and you know, when they passed last time, they hung all of that, you know, his son, took some of the only he was about to kill his son, and the people said, no, you cannot kill Jonathan, because Jonathan, God will be victim to Jonathan, and that's how Jonathan was killed. Now let us look back at where we left off from. We left off at first Samuel chapter 15, verse 10, and we're going to find out from verse 1, 2, to verse 10, and we're going to find the picture, and we're going to read it. Amen. And Samuel said unto First Samuel 15, verse 1, 2 to 10. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint me to the king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hearken, go unto the voice of the word of the Lord. But take the Lord of all. I remember that which the Amalek did to Israel, how he laid way for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and kill them not. They kill both man and woman, infant and suckling, and peace. And so I gathered the people together and numbered them in two hearing. Two hundred thousand footmen and ten thousand men of Judah. And so I came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And so I said unto the king, Go and depart, get you going from among me. The Amalekites, let I destroy you with them, for he took kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Canaanites departed from among the Amalekites. And so more the Amalekites from Hagarah until those Canaanites to saw that is over against Egypt. And he took over. King of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But part of the people stayed over and the death of the sheep and of the oxen 
and of the customs, and of the land, and all that was good. And it not totally destroyed them. But everything that was high in this tree, that they were destroyed totally. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel saying, It was certain to me that I had set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and I not perform my commandments. And he grieved Samuel and he cried unto the Lord all night. So, after all that Saul did before, after all that King Saul did before, the Lord was still willing to work with him. The Lord was still willing to give him room to repent. And if we look at verse 1, Samuel reverts something to him. But so, so in his mind, he said that God not speak up. That was Samuel was saying to him. What's the word? He said, no, there's no heart now to the voice of the Lord. So the Lord was willing to give him another time. The Lord said, he's one man who could be king over Israel. No, therefore, how can go unto the voice? So God was willing to give him another time to spoil had recognized his fault at this point. And made a mate. I believe that God would allow him to continue to live. Sometimes you underestimate the power of repentance. The Lord allowed him, and this is the type of God that is serving us. The Islam suffering, and the Lord allowed him room to repent. And what God did. God saw all that he did wrong, but God was still willing to work with him. And what God did now, gave him another test. God gave him another test. He said, Go up. I will remember what they did to Israel when they came out of Egypt. So God wanted him to prove himself. God wanted him to prove himself. And God was clear to him. God said, look here, destroy everything. Leave nothing. Destroy the Amalekites and fear nothing. The Bible said that he saw and the people disobeyed the Lord because they killed Adam and the death of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatling in the land and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. These are the exact words in the Bible. But everything that was bad, everything that was restored, that they utterly destroyed. So the people feared Israel and they feared the death of the soul. So what Saul did, was that he first rightly disobeyed the command of the Lord. If Saul had repented and followed the commandment of the Lord, God would have extended mercy. The Lord said, It repented me that I set up Saul to be king. You can imagine God saying that about him. When the Lord said, It repented, it is always when sin is at its Highest of wickedness. It's always when sin is at the highest point. Any time you hear God say, it will come to me that it is always when sin 
is a power point. I will use this to tell them to start a stick. Let us tell them to start a stick one to seven. Let us tell them this point. It, 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 it means here that power was at the height of wickedness. That is why the Lord said, it was tempted me that I set fire to the sea. Oh, glory to God. Now, if we look in Genesis chapter 6, from verse 1 through to verse 7, and the same to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them. But the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were here and they took them wives of all which they took. And the Lord said, My spirit will not always serve with man. For that he also is yet yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they built children to them, the children became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God, so this is the point of the sentiment, and God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of, of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And that it repented the Lord that he had made man and the earth and grieving us in his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man. When I have created from the place of the earth, both man and me, and the two same things, and the soul of the year, for it is tempted me that I have made them. So, like I'm saying, it is only when sin is at its highest, when wickedness is at its highest, we hear the Lord said, it was tempted me. So when God said that it was tempted me that I had set up power to the sin, it was because the thing that Paul was doing was at the height of wickedness. It was at the height of sin. And God said it was tempted me. Similarly to how when wickedness was in the earth, but in Genesis chapter 6, the Lord said, It is tempted me that I need man. And I am going to act, I am going to destroy them. So again, God was about to act. Because he gave Saul room to repent, and Saul did not repent. I want us to understand that I need one. We don't have it on the slide, but it's coming my straight. That this time that we are living in, you see, when the wicked is getting it higher, it is high you now enough. That is the time God is going to act. When the church leaves this earth and the, the head goes through, amen, the, the, the seven year period, when the head the goes through the seven year period, when the antichrist is going to rule, and wickedness will. Increase it will be at its highest on the land. I want you to understand that God is going to act and He is going to judge the earth again. I will be pure as I knew from the point that as people of God, we try our very best to remain here. If you are not here, meaning that you have not yet repented of your sins. You have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of those things. And you have not yet received the instilling of the Holy Ghost. I want to ensure you that you get here because what we see in the earth right now with so much pain and so much violence, it is all clear to what will come. And I want to ensure that as the church, as 
love God. I think it is fear the love that we do not be on the earth during the time we need a beautiful story. Amen, somebody. So in Genesis chapter 6, the Lord says, we can make it home, and God acted, and it is coming again. I want us to understand. Let's go to the, 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 the slide. The next slide. There is a cut off point with God, and for this, Saul was it. God saw everything that Saul did. He saw everything that Saul did, and he was too willing to work with Saul. He wanted Saul to come to the point of repentance. Remember, the Bible says that is not his will. That any could pay, but that all could come to a statement. God wanted Paul to repent, and God wanted Paul to show him that, you know, I am willing to follow your every word, I am willing to follow your command. So God gave him another task, and he said, Go oh, and totally destroy Amalek. And he still to do that. And I want us to understand that there is a cut off point with God. And for Saul, this time when he was disobedient to the command of God, this was the cut off point. I want us to be reminded as people of God if we are doing wrong, remember that there is a cut off point with God. Oh, Jesus. Somebody might say, come forth me. In that God of justice, in that in, in, in that of peace and in that God of mercy, it, you know, God will not cut me off. You know, some folks have to believe that, you know, because God is merciful and because He's loving and because He's long suffering and because, you know, it, it is His will for all to come to the same time. That is not going to cut off. I want us to know that if that is the way we are thinking, the devil has caused us to believe a lie. Because as much as God is loving, as much as God is long suffering, there is a proper point. He is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is a God of justice and judgment, and he will cut us out. Let us not be fear. Justice and judgment. As loving as the Lord is, and as the love that is for us in that he has sent his son to die and the cross for us. I want us to understand that in the Lord, God did all of that in this time, in this dispensation. He will cut us out. So this is what I was saying. So, so God is in you today. And he will just not eat the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right? And he rejected King Saul, and he will do the same today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, like I said. Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that been often with true hardness next, that suddenly be destroyed, and that withhold remedy. Tonight I want the church. Tonight I want the peace of like God. If we find ourselves, Oh, Jesus, doing something, mighty God. If we find ourselves doing something that we know that it is wrong and it is not of God, let us stop doing them. Let us be persuaded in our mind. Amen. That this thing is wrong. Hallelujah. And let us turn from our sinful ways and turn to God. Yes, we are going to go for our feet. Yes, we are going to follow them because we are both of men. 
But when you have a heart to repent, when you have a heart to turn from the things that you do wrong and turn to God, it's a great, it's a great difference in the life of an individual that has made up his mind to serve God as he it is part of your thing. And as we go down and look at the life of Paul, and we realize how hard it was for Samuel to get him to see that he sinned. So I'm saying to us that God will cut us off. Let us go to the next slide. He will cut us off. But he will not cut us off. He will not break us. Amen. We call one. So God will give us fear to repent. But if we will to repent, and we are one many times, like the scripture said in Proverbs, we will then have to cut us off. God will not cut us off without one. So even though God has a cut off point, brother than sister, even though he will act, amen, when sin is at its highest point, he will act. I want us to understand. That God will not cut us off. He will not act unless He first won. And we can go back to the scripture in Proverbs 29, verse 1. He that be often with food. Be often with food means that you get very about the food. Somebody talks to you about it. Talk to you about it. Talk to you about it. That suddenly be destroyed and that would be remedy. So when we look at the Ninevites, he warned the Ninevites when God was about to destroy Ninevites because of your wickedness. He had the wickedness that come up before him. If you are telling him, it is when the wickedness gets, gets to its highest height, that's the time God is ready to be. He's ready to cut her. He's ready to act. And the the sin of the Ninevites came up before him. Jonah chapter 1, verse 2. And he didn't just cut them out like that. He didn't just destroy them. He didn't just act. What he did, he sent the prophet Jonah. After Jonah, go and speak to Ninevites. Tell them to respond because I am about to act. Jonah believed that, you know, it was how great and was too good for the Ninevites. So he flew, but at the end of the day, he ended up in Ninevites. Mm-hmm. And he cried out the Bible says, Then cried he. Then cried he. Let's try today, and Ninevites shall be overthrown. And that's what Jonah see in verse 4. So, God will warn us before he acts. He will talk to us. He will warn us. And he talks to Saul. Because the church is upgraded him. He warned Saul when he gave him the last absolute. And God will warn us. God will talk to us. So what about this? If we are doing the wrong, before we ask what he will do, we will first of all talk to us through the Holy Spirit. The thing that you are doing is wrong. And the Holy Spirit will comfort. The Holy Spirit will mother. The Holy Spirit will convict us. When a conscience is alive, the Holy Spirit will convict us. And most of the time when the Holy Spirit convicts us, we tend to turn. But if we continue to sit now and then and turn our heart, then the Lord will talk to us to a preacher. Or a preacher. And the teacher will teach a particular thing. And if the teacher has to go to the door following the Holy Spirit, he will go up to just a minute after you. But 
that you will talk to us for the future and for the future. I said, look at the things you are going to do with it. But then, if we continue to do the wrong, he will then expose the wrong thing that we are doing. The Lord said to us, the children of Israel to the prophet Jeremiah. He said, I will put your spirit over your feet that you see your majesty. So if God through the Holy Spirit talk to us and we don't, we, we, we don't change our way. We look up our fellow God and, and we continue in our way. The Lord will talk to us to the people and to the people. The Lord will sing from my throat. But if we refuse, then the Lord will explore the way I'm seeing that we are doing. Yes, the Lord said, I will put your skirt over your feet that you're seeing my feet. If we go on, we run, and we go on, and we don't see to the word of the word of the Lord, he will expose us. And if we don't take heed to the word of God, then you will put us out. Let us look at the next slide. First Samuel. Yes, we have it. First Samuel 13, 13 and 14. He will afford us, and if we further with this, he will put us out. When Saul came back after the bread and the peace offering, Samuel confronted him. Samuel said, Look here, you're doing wrong enough. You shouldn't do it. So when we look at 1 Samuel 13, 13 and 14, it was not just an upbraiding, but it was also a warning to Saul and said, You've been wrong, you've been foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord. Look at the picture. And Samuel said to Saul, Go at them foolishly. Go at them foolishly. Go at not kept the commandment of the Lord, thy God. Which he commands me, for now who the Lord has established that kingdom upon Israel forever. But now that kingdom shall not continue, the Lord has passed him and man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be stepping over his people, because God has not kept that which the Lord commanded him. Then when we go down to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, which is just read, Samuel also said to Saul, The Lord put me to one of these, to be king over his people, over Israel. No, therefore, God is unto the voice of the words of the Lord. So, in essence, the prophet was saying to him, it's time to stop doing what you're doing and, 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 and be obedient to the word, to the command of the Lord. So he was warned, what you're doing is wrong. You can't disobey the command of the Lord like that. Not in answer the voice of the Lord. He was no saying to him in chapter 15, because God was no giving him the sign and test. To see if he was willing to obey the command of the Lord. But he did not. And the Lord said, If you tempted me, that I need to see. And the Lord accepted. Because what Saul was doing was at the height of wickedness. We 
time to think of it as human food. That's not doing what the command of the Lord says. So we can only have a way out. Simplifying certain things. You know, don't make it look as serious. As it is. And the major thing that the Bible spoke about was just in disobedience to the command of the Lord. You see, when we walk according to the word of the Lord, we come on the Lord. And so I wanted his own way. And he wanted to do his own thing. Let us look at first and we'll keep seeing now. Verse 12. Look at the Bible between. We're looking at the Bible dialogue now between Samuel and Saul. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was poor Samuel saying, Saul came to Samuel, and the old he set up a field and is gone about, and passed on and gone down to Jesus. And Samuel came to Saul, no, I want to say this in this. And Samuel came to Saul. And Saul said unto him, Blessed be the word of the Lord, who has performed the commandments of the Lord. So, you see how he did Saul because in 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1, Saul, it was a wrong move. And so he come now in verse 13 and he greeted Saul. Remember, we just read in a couple of verses which said that Saul feared Agar, that Saul and the people feared Agar, and they feared the death of the Saul. When the command of the Lord was for them to utterly destroy everything. And this man ran out of Jesus and he met the prophet and he said, Prophet, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Let us go to the next slide. And this man must be the new tonight. Must have been the new tonight. Let us be the Lord of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. The Lord said everything must be destroyed, even to the infant. In the Lord, they are smite and alert, and totally destroyed all that they have, and kill them not. They kill both man, woman, infant, for clean. The baby from the death that said, get rid of them. Right? The oxen and sheep, camel, everything that said, destroy. Destroy everything. Leave nothing alive. But Saul wanted to do his own thing. Oh, Jesus. Chapter 14, verse 12. Fear is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. The way that seems right to a man, the end of that way is the Paul wanted in own way. When the Lord gave him the command, the Lord wanted the Paul wanted in own way. The Lord said, kill everything. And we said it before, everything means everything. What part of everything you don't understand? But Paul will 
team right here. We got teams that have got to be one on one when we come to God. We have to kill them. It's not a real We will be done great with that. I have the same power in mind every day. Oh God, it, when we come to we must deny ourselves, take up the cross and follow him. It's not about me. I must be free and you must be free. Anytime you find we start getting in the way of God, it's trouble. Because it's real. So I have the power of it. I as the heaven is above the earth. So I is real. Higher than our way. And he knows what is the for us. So I must be free and see what he sees. Whenever time I start doing things on your own and start wanting to own you, you're going to find yourself in problem because it's God supposed to be running the show. The Lord of God supposed to be running the show. I belong to the Lord. So we have to allow him to run the show. But any time you start, bad force, you know, you can mark force when you see them start operating in their own way. The Bible said the end of is death. And the truth at this point was operating in his own way. So he feels so excited. He feels so excited. So the prophet Better be the word of the Lord and have to serve the commandment of the Lord. You can imagine God looking at me, and this is why if you have a good around you, I want to be in the back of our mind. Repentance. Repentance is about recognizing that we are in sin and turning from that sin and dedicating ourselves to God. So I want to have a good that we bear that in mind. Because the Lord gave a command, and this man refused to do the command. He refused, he refused, you know, to do the command of the Lord. And he seemed so excited, blessed be the Lord of the Lord, I have to follow the commandment of the Lord. First and well, he seemed. 14 and 15, and Samuel said, What mean this? Then the beginning of the sea. If you come on, if you perform the command of the Lord, where the sea to come from, you are bleeding of the sea in my ears, and knowing of the action which I hear. And Saul said, Look at what the man said. And Saul said, Where? But you know. Where have brought them from Amalek? For the people feared the death of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. The king blamed the people. The king blamed the people. It was the people that brought the death of the spoil from, Am- from the Amalekites to sacrifice unto the Lord. But there were a word in the chapter where the king gave an adoration and said, Anyone that eats before sundown until I will be avenged of my enemy will be killed. So if the king of kings had killed everything, the people would have obeyed his voice. But he was more interested in pleasing himself than pleasing the Lord. If he had simply said to the people, kill everything, if he had gone out with his sword, Instead killing the animals, the people would have followed through. 
and see how I would be like. But he was more interested in changing himself. His eyes were, were, were caught by the things that were destroyed, by the quiet. The first thing that in the scripture, in the book of Proverbs 28, 30, verse 15, 5, he that covers his sins shall not cry. Paul was confronted by the prophet. And he said, it is not me, but it is the people that feel the death of the soil. The man, it could be one of us. I saw a man of us, and yes, man, I did wrong. But the man was so sick, I want to find you know, Want to talk to him? That the man was so sick in his ways that even when the prophet was saying, "He said, no, it's not me, it's the people." He that covers his face shall not suffer. Any time you find a person who is willing to accept the wrong, willing to repent, and will even deny the obvious, this person is delusional. And will not prosper. Anytime you find a person like this, that will not accept that they are wrong, they will not receive forgiveness. He that covers his sin will not prosper, but he that confesses and forsakes them. We have no peace. It was obvious that the king's heart was in a bustle of fear. It was in a bustle of fear, and he refused to repent. He refused to recognize his wrong. He refused to accept it, even when he was confronted. Instead, it is the people, the king blame the people, it is not me. When we go on to first Samuel chapter 6, chapter 15, we're going from 16 now to 21. First Samuel chapter 15, 16 to 21. Any time you find a person, not willing to accept your own mind. Not that person. He was put up on that person. Because a child with no form of conversation with that person. And not then. So the king child was in a back to the field. First Samuel chapter 15. Then Samuel said unto God, Hear, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto me, Hear, and I said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not near the head of the tribe of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent me on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then thou didst not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fall upon the soil and did evil in the sight of the Lord. And so I said unto Samuel, this is another point again in the scripture, because this is the second time now the king, the, the prophet is saying to the king, that look here, the king, as I say, I feel like bones all over me. The prophet now is saying to him, you know, You didn't do the command. But in the year, yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and I've drawn the way which the Lord sent me and I've brought Abraham the king of Amalek. 
and has totally destroyed the Amalekites. Next verse. But the thief will take off the spoil, keep an option, the thief of the things which could have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. This is the loot in our dream. It is not the loot in our dream or what it is. Because the prophet starts here before and says, Yes, look at me, the prophet, and I say, I carried out, blessed be thou of the Lord, I have carried out the Lord's commandment. So the prophet was now confronting him and I said, Look at you, don't do it. The man said, Yes. I did carry out the command. He said, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have drawn the will which the Lord has sent me and have brought a God who came at Amalek and has utterly destroyed the Amalekites. No, if you utterly destroy the Amalekites, what is the king a God doing there? Next verse. Next verse. Next If you totally destroy the Amalekites, what is King Agar doing you? And this is what I'm saying, that if a man hears the king around, no pure old Christ, he will not accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to pray unto God, break the soul in heart. God, to me, worry of repentance like John the Baptist did. And say, God, if, 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 if you have that, dry to witness. He wants to God when you send to me, give me somebody that will accept the work I'm saying. Because the fear of the king, 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 is the person will not accept that he's a sinner. He will not return. He will not see the need for the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Furthermore, again the king blamed the people. You know, I was just going to sit there a couple of minutes ago that he blamed the people. When the prophet came up to my room, he was adamant that he carried out the commandment of the Lord, and he was now saying to the prophet again that the people put this forward. The thief of the thing that should have utterly been destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord in his Jesus. And Samuel said unto him, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrificing as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to offer than the fact of land. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, or of evil, he has also rejected thee from being king. Let's go back to the slide. If the man cannot see his fault, if the man cannot see himself as a sin, then he will not be willing to turn from his sin and dedicate himself to God. This is a challenge that we have when we witness to get the person to see themselves as a sinner. The king refused to accept that he did the wrong. The king blamed the people. If he had seen to say, kill everything, the people would have obeyed and would have seen everything. Let us go to the next slide. So even when the prophet told him, he didn't carry out the commandment of the Lord. He said, yes, I do. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. I have gone the way which the Lord has sent me. And I have brought his back, the king of Amalek. And I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. And this is what I was saying. If all of them were utterly destroyed, what was the king of doing there? Next slide.
when you were coming from the blue in the teeth, the teeth took the spoil, and the teeth took the best of everything. I would say if a man can have seen self, I got seen and then he will not be willing to serve from the teeth. And this is a challenge that we have when we witness. it. So the king was to accept that he was disobedient to God's command. So the prophet let him know that the Lord will have great delight in burnt offering. But in verse 23, he said, For rebellion is at the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is at iniquity and idolatry, because God has rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected you from being king. Next slide. So the king refused to accept that he was disobedient to God's commandment. And the prophet now let him know that the disobedience to God's commandment is that the witchcraft of life. I was saying that it, was, it is not a simple thing. When we just disobedient like that, it, it is not simple. So when you say that disobedience of God's command, is that the sin of witchcraft. What the prophet was saying to him, it is like using divination. It is like consulting familiar spirits. So disobedience to God's command is a point of wickedness. It is similar to going to the poor old man. It is similar to going to have a bath long by the old man. Oh, glory to God. This is disobedience to God's word, disobedience to God's command. It is better to obey God as a word. Can you imagine? They are from this to the Holy Spirit, and we refuse to obey. He sends the preacher, and we refuse to obey what the preacher said and do our own thing, this was what he saw was doing. It is better, brethren, to obey the word of the Lord than to do your own will. This is why the Bible says, David said, in the bad word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. The thing even though the king, even though he was one, tried to justify his disobedience to the Lord's command. Poor that he disobeyed the Lord's commandment, and he tried to justify So the prophet said, All right, pray unto the king. Forgiveness is as easy to see the card of man trying so hard to, 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 to accept that he went against God for man. Even when the prophet was sent, he said, No, you don't need the people. You didn't. Yes, I did do everything that God said to do, and the man could not see. So, so the prophet said, Look at your cover and you're stepping on your own way. And said, Tobanus is an iniquity and idolatry. It is persistent. Tobanus is persisting in sin when you move it around. And you're persisting in it. And justifying it. And pleading for it. It is an iniquity of idolatry. The highest degree of wickedness. This is why God is up to us. Everything that Paul was doing was at the height of wickedness. This is why God said, Look here. You have to look here. You have to find somebody else to be seen. But you can't continue to see. This again, the commandment of the Lord is not a simple thing as we, as we make it seem. Right? So sometimes we just look and we say, Look here. You know, it's a simple thing, man. You know, 
าตาคนใดตัวมันจะมีสิ่งใดที่ติดลังบนนิสิตบนนิสิตไรนิสิตก็คนดีไร It's disobedient that for the commandment of the Lord, you know, because we know what God is for. So we might feel that disobedient is a simple thing. I will do the thing next week. I will do it right next week. It doesn't work like that. It is a serious thing to disobey the Lord. He comes for sleep. If God needs God, we must serve Him. And if God needs God, and we feel a about Him, we must serve Him. And we must be willing to obey His word. So because God has rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord has rejected you from being seen. The first time you disobeyed the commandment of the Lord, the first time you were the punishment was handed over. Your kingdom will not last. From here we see where the punishment handed over. Where the Kingdom is going to be taken from you and given to your neighbor. So the rejection of God was the punishment for him being disobedient to God. It was punishment for him being disobedient to God. So. The rejection from being seen. This is what I want us to, 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 to understand. The rejection from being seen was a serious one. It meant that the truth of the Lord, there was no open sign that departed from him. Yet, I just want to tell you here, you can try to feel your truth, you can feel your truth, you can feel your truth, you can feel your truth. Because I can't feel the presence of God. You ever, you ever, you, you ever get to that place yet? You know that it, you're not doing anything wrong, you know. But it, it is just you dry and the weapon is as bright and you want to feel that I can't feel it. This rejection meant that the spirit of the Lord will be far from God. This is why when David said, you know, you wrote in Psalm 51. It's a cast me not away from your presence. It's a straight not your holy spirit from me. Because we don't the spirit of God. So you can imagine how calm and calm what I did. The Bible says he was spirit from God. From he was spirit came upon him after the spirit of God left him. Can you imagine how calm he must have been? So even though all the time, the, the, the prophet was saying to him, and talking to him, and telling him, you say, you're doing wrong. The man was saying, I was not wrong. I have done everything that God said to do. And it was the people that took the fire. It was not until he heard the judgment that the kingdom shall be taken from you and given to it. And neighbor of them. That was the time when you said, Look here, I have seen. Verse 24, and Saul said, I have seen for us from great the commandment of the Lord, and thy word, because I feared the people and obeyed the word. So this poor folks. Be to us that the man still was not at this point. So even when he said, Yes, I was wrong, the man was still blaming the people in verse 24. Be sure that even at this point, he was still not at the point where he was ready to repent. The man was stubborn in his own way. So then we go into first Samuel chapter sixteen. David was anointed king, and the spirit of the Lord departed from King Saul and came upon David. Then 
and they will take the arm of oil and the mind of him in the midst of his virtue. And the spirit of the Lord came up and viewed from that day forward for Samuel rose up and then to run. But the spirit of the Lord departed from God and an evil spirit from the Lord from the east. The spirit could not see a man in the place. In, in, in the kingdom of Israel. So when King David was anointed, the spirit of God left him and an evil spirit came upon God. From that point onward, King Saul lost. Took a turn for the world. It took a turn for the world when he started. But it took a turn for the world now when the spirit of the Lord left him. He was fearful of Goliath. So Goliath came up to the Lord and he said, Look here, send me a man. The time I fight him, if we win, then you will serve us. And if you win, then we will serve you. The man was behind the armies of the Lord. So that Lord left him and he was fearful. He saw a lot of stuff. He saw a lot of things in the promises of God. But that this time, the Spirit of God left him. Then he was jealous and angry. Took over to him. He was not in control of his emotion anymore. And he seemed overturned. Right? Then the next time he Try to know that David and this was the next time he tried to know that David and Jonathan in 1 Samuel 18, 11, and then 1 Samuel 20, 32. He tried to murder his own son because his son was helping David. He spent the rest of the life. This was a man that started out so good. He spent the rest of his life. Trying to kill the trying to kill the Lord anointed. God anointed David. And the man spent the rest of his years trying to kill David. So I recognized that the spirit of the Lord was now with David. But he did not respect for that. Instead of serving and protecting the people, he spent the rest of his years trying to kill David so that David would not become king. And David could have killed him many times. But he did not. David had respect for the Lord and mounted. But Paul had no respect. Paul recognized that the spirit was on David and he recognized that we fear the Lord. Anointed David. So King Saul was a man with the character of a king, but the characteristic of a man who did not know the Lord. And we end. With this tonight, but we spend a couple of weeks looking at we spend a couple of weeks we spend a couple of weeks looking at King Saul and we look at the things that he did right, and we spend more time looking at the things things that he did wrong. At the same time, I try to point out to us, you know, why we see the wrong things that he did. I try to point out to us. That as people of God, we could not make the same mistake, but that we should try our very best, our utmost best, to please the Lord, to serve the Lord. We, if we follow and if we go down the line of King Saul, where we are stubborn and stuck in our own way, and don't want to do the thing, the command of the Lord, and, and don't want to obey the word of the Lord, when, 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 when the word is being when the world is preached and the God comes with us and we are going to find ourselves right to each other who was cut up. We are going to find ourselves right to each other who was rejected 
Yes, he was rejected from being king over Israel, but the Bible says we are kings and queens. And if you are not fearful, if you are not fearful to walk according to the will of God, you are going to find that there is a cut off point and we will find ourselves on the outside. I pray tonight that we will not find ourselves on the outside, but we will find ourselves on the inside in our relationship with our Lord and Savior. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in next week. God will, will come back and we will look now at the life of King David and we will see the, the mistake and we will see how David speaks with his mistake. So, Father, we have another thing and then we wrap up. God bless you tonight in the name of the Lord. Let us just bow our heads as we dismiss. Lord, we thank you. Mighty God, for all that you have done for us, we thank you for what you will be doing. We thank you, mighty God, for this word that went forth. We pray, O oh God, that it will accomplish what you will, because it will not return unto your void. We ask, Jesus Christ, that you continue to stir us up, that you continue to stir us up. Mighty God, that we, your people, might live a life that is pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray that you continue to follow our steps in your word and continue to cover us with your spirit and hide us underneath your blood. As we go through the rest of this week, we pray that you go before us and that you take good care of us. Let your will be done tonight as we give us thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.